Dr. Cornell West has started a war of words online and off. Maybe you heard about it. He gave an interview to the Washington Post and he said this, and I quote, I think my dear brother Barack Obama has a certain fear of free black men. It's understandable. As a young brother who grows up in a white context, brilliant African father, he's always had to fear being a white man with black skin. All he has known culturally is white. When he meets an independent black brother, it is frightening. Now that statement has not only caused waves in the black community, but um, well, just about everywhere. Mark Lamont Hill is an African American studies uh, professor from Columbia University. Mark, welcome. Good to be here. I, I know West is miffed at the president for perceived slights, but why take it this far? Well, let's be clear first. Uh, Professor West isn't just upset at perceived slights. He's also uh, profoundly frustrated with the Obama administration's approach to addressing issues of poverty, inequality, marginalization. Yeah, but why bring race into it? Well, I think it's, it's a racialized conversation. He's upset with the way the president has responded to poor black people, for example. So you have to talk about race. Now, that said, I do disagree, even from a strategic perspective, that we want to say that the president is a mascot or that he's afraid of free black men. Even if it were true, which I don't think it is, I think it takes away from P Professor West's more substantive point, which is that the Obama administration has to take a, a stronger stance on addressing issues of marginalization among America's most vulnerable people. And, of course, there are other um, African Americans who think that the president is overlooking uh, poor um, black Americans. I, I talked to Tavis Smiley not long ago. This is what he had to say about it. The president has not done enough about black unemployment, in part, I think, because, respectfully, he's afraid of being accused of being tribal uh, if he does, in fact, help the African-American community in specific and unique ways. So, so, no. so there it is again, Mark. I mean, why bring race into this? Because, you know, Barack Obama is president of the United States. He's president for all of us, <laughs> not just right. one segment of the population. Right, but black people are citizens of the United States, and other constituent groups are allowed to be named. You can talk about LGBT groups. You can talk about Jewish brothers and sisters. You can talk about the middle class. You can talk about all sorts of folk, but whenever black people get named, it becomes an entirely different conversation. And I think uh, Tavis Smiley's right to say that President Obama is in a unique position because every time race talk emerges, he goes from being a, a president who's black to becoming a black president. And whenever he becomes racialized in that way, he becomes less popular among uh, the majority read white Americans. So he does have a racial conundrum that he has to address. There's nothing wrong with bring, bringing race into the conversation. Race is a central part of the, of the American project. We have to talk about it. The question is, can we talk about it in constructive ways, in, in constructive ways right. rather constructive than ways... constructive ways, because he's not Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., right? He's the president of the United States. Sure. Aren't we expecting That's a little too sure. much of him? No, I mean, I expect a lot from Barack Obama, not because he's, the, because he's black, but because he's the president and because black people voted for him. So I think he owes black people a whole bunch. The question, though, is what strategic approach do we take? I think the approach is to challenge President Obama, for, but for us to organize and drag him back to the left. Other groups dragged him to the right. We've seen him push to the right on offshore drilling. We've seen him drag to the right on free trade. We've seen him drag to the right on Wall Street reform. Let's drag him back to the left on issues that matter around unemployment. That's what we need to do. So does Barack Obama have a responsibility? Absolutely. But I would love to see those of us who are critiquing President Obama organize and, and form movements that force him the other way. That's the real work that has to be done. Well, and, and just talking about those critiques, something else is interesting that's going on. Every time Barack Obama makes a decision, um, we tend to psychoanalyze him. Oh, it's because he had a white mother. Oh, it's because he had a Kenyan father. Oh, it's because of this. Right. Why, why do Americans, a lot of them, insist on doing that? Why can't he just make a decision because he's a politician? Well... Part of it is because we have tons of free time. In the era of 24-hour cable news, we have a lot of time to fill up. And so we need to do a lot of psychoanalysis just to, just to fill time, I think. But the other piece of this is that uh, your, your culture, your identity, your background, it does inform how you make decisions. No one is independent of their history. We all are constituted. We're all made by all sorts of things. And so Barack Obama is no exception. Does his upbringing inform how, we, how he governs? Absolutely, as do his advisors, as, does the, uh, as do the opinion polls. There are a lot of factors, and considering his identity as one of them is not a wrong thing to do. The question, though, is how accurate is that analysis? Is, is it too simplistic to say that because he's a Kenyan father and a white mother that he's governing this way, or that he went to a particular <laughs> church, or that he made a particular policy decision? That's a tough call to make. But I would say that we have to consider it because he's been very transparent about saying that he struggled with racial identity, that he struggled with cultural identity. He struggled to belong, mm -hmm. knowing that does matter. Uh, Mark Lamont Hill, I could talk about this all day. It's a fascinating topic. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. My pleasure. It. And can you introduce me as a free black man next time? <laughs> I will. Thanks so 
so much for being with us. My pleasure. He's a Kennedy.